So the stadium virtually bathed in darkness at the moment. The only thing that really can be seen are a few torches on mobile phones and Shay's coat uh, as the light show comes on. Uh, again, this is, uh, I know people can be cynical about these things and go, oh, just let the atmosphere build, Franny. But actually, you, St Mary's needs nights like this. Oh, for sure. It's, uh, it can be a magical night. It, you know, a semi-final in itself is brilliant, and it's uh, an opportunity for the home fans to make a difference for their team this evening. Uh, we, we could very much enjoy the flames as well, because that's giving us much needed look. look it's a cliche, is it? It's two legs for these semi-finals. So Newcastle don't have to do anything daft tonight, knowing that they've got the second leg at St James's. Exactly that. I mean, like you said, they want to go and get a couple of goals if they can. But what they do know, they've got to go back to St James's Park in a week's time. So um, you look at the supporters that they brought here tonight, they're, they're enthusiastic, they know they want to win something. So if they can get a result here tonight, they'll be more than pleased because, uh, as you said, it's just it's only the first part of the, 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 the competition. Do you think that does change how Newcastle approach things tonight, knowing they've got the second leg at St James's? I think so, and Eddie mentioned his interview as well. They've got a free weekend as well. They've got no games this weekend. The FA Cups have got seven days to prepare for the second leg as well. So for me, it's very much staying the tight tonight. Don't do anything daft and bring them back to St James's Park. We know what that's like, the atmosphere up there on, on, on a night game, game as well. So I think a draw even is not a bad result here tonight. We've mentioned Southampton start their two January signings. Is this kind of quite a good game to start them in? Without, without the pre I know semi-finals bring some kind of pressure, but without the Premier League pressure, but still with the expectation that there is. It's different, clearly, but, you know, they want to be playing, they want to be in the side, new signers want to go and show what they can, show the home supporters what they can do. There's no better stage than this to be able to do it, so they go out, perform, the supporters will get behind them. I'm sure you all gave great answers, I can't hear a thing. Along with a live tannoy, just throwing a brass band as well, it makes it even harder. Right, let's join our commentary team as Southampton and Newcastle come out. Here are Don Goodman and, first of all, Seb Hutchinson. Yes, I could just about to hear you, Mark. Good evening from St Mary's. Scene setter for the first leg of the first semi-final of this season's Carabao Cup. Two clubs with contrasting progress in the Premier League. Southampton and Newcastle United, but tonight is no sideshow. The chance for a trophy should not be taken for granted for those who have waited so long for silverware. Well, Southampton have made four changes from the defeat on this ground to Aston Villa. And there are first starts for new signings, Mr. Orsic and Carlos Alcaraz. Sekou Mara and Musa Gineppo, the goal-scoring heroes against Manchester City, also come into the side. Jan Benerick, recalled from his loan at Aston Villa, is on the bench. Newcastle United unchanged for the fourth match in a row. Nick Pope hasn't conceded a goal since the last time these clubs met in early November. A game in which Willock, Almiron and Bruno Gimaraes found the net. Alexander Isak again has to accept a place amongst the substitutes. Well, we have players tonight enjoying their first starts for their new club. But, Don, you want to focus on one of the more dependable heads for Southampton this season? Yeah, absolutely. When I came and saw Southampton beat Manchester City, I was massively impressed with Kyle Walker-Peter. So versatile and maybe a tad unlucky that England are so blessed in that department. But he's 25 years old, he needs to keep going. I think he can knock on the door of the England squad, I really do, is that good. Talking about fullbacks, Newcastle, the signing of Kieran Trippier was one of the big, really important signings Eddie Howe made last January. Wonderful set piece delivery. You can see there the chances that he creates for his team. You have to say the conversion rate of those chances may be not as good or as high as it should be, but keep an eye out for that wonderful delivery. Well, for Nathan Jones, a uh, tough start initially, but things have improved in recent weeks, including that fantastic victory over Manchester City in the last round. Really spurred the club on and gave them hope of staying up. And speaking of hope, there's plenty of hope around Newcastle United. The Toon Army enjoying their club's progress this season. Southampton and Newcastle United, two clubs 
with hopes and dreams of ending the long wait for silverware. But this is just the first step. And Eddie Howe naming a very strong side for this one. And that shows how much this competition means to Newcastle United at this point in time. When you're in the semi-final, where you've got to really give it a go of winning it. This just the first leg, of course. You can't win the tie from here, but you can, as they say, lose it. St. Mary's and to get behind their side here and give them a good start. And away we go, two clubs who have never won this competition but find themselves in a brilliant position to reach the final. And it starts this evening, Don Goodman, and you saw that match between Southampton and Manchester City, but Newcastle United present a different challenge. Yeah, very much so, whilst most people would acknowledge Manchester City one of, if not the best team in world football on the day. Southampton played the perfect game, they were aggressive. Nathan Jones called for them to be aggressive in their closing down, in their tackling, they were. They thoroughly deserved their victory, but Newcastle would present different types of challenges to Manchester City. They can probably match the physicality of Southampton. So, a fascinating battle here. Callum Wilson starting tonight, keeping out. Alexander Isak who scored Newcastle's last goal. Eight against Fulham. And that's before the goal was drawn at Selhurst Park. Zulu going long towards Horsic, who scored a stunning goal in the third place match at the World Cup. The Croatian, who's fleet of foot, and has enjoyed scoring against English teams in Europe, now playing in England. The profile of signing real young players, haven't they? He's one that's slightly bit older. Almiron. This is encouraging for Newcastle early on, and they've moved it on well. Finish from Willock. Well, it wasn't much of one done. Well, do you know what? I'm going to defend him, though, because I do think here, if he has a touch and tries to get it onto his stronger right foot, then he might get closed down. So I like the fact that he's got his courage of his convictions. Look where he comes from. He covers an absolute mile. That's absolutely stunning effort, but he doesn't set himself. It is on his weaker foot. It is bouncing a little bit, but he would have hoped to have done better. been a feature of this Newcastle side, those midfield runners, Arlington, Willock, one staff in this side, midfield dictated to at the base by Bruno Gimarais. Found themselves in a good position there, the visitors. Share forward to Wilson. They started this way actually against Crystal Palace at the weekend. About this Newcastle United side at the moment, just lacking a bit of cutting edge. Look to find it here. Wilson, gonna find room for the shots, losing Joel Linton. It's all a bit tight in there. Spun towards the back post, Almiron was ready. Trippier didn't really catch hold of it cleanly. Bruno Gimarais, this is threatening here for Newcastle. Fast across. Piece of goal. Well, three minutes in and already this feels different to Manchester City, doesn't it? The energy, the aggression of Newcastle, it is coming to the fore, really imposing themselves in these opening exchanges. Eddie Howe said they were coming here to try and win in his press conference. Well, the early signs are that they really have no takers from Longstaff, puts it into the right area. Maybe finds one or two of his teammates slightly on their heels there. There's one of the new boys, Alcaraz, finding Mara. Sharp turn, Trippier got back at him. And illegally, here's Almiron. And Salasu quick to close him down. And Miguel Almiron, what a season he's had so far. Their best season. He's looked so sharp for this campaign. 
Real goal scoring threat. Oh, share. Thought he was caught there by Mara. Seemed to be much wrong with it at first glance, but he's a bit of it's not a bother here. Yeah, I think it's the follow-through from Fabian Shea. I don't think Sekumara does anything wrong. In fact, he actually blocks the ball, but it's just that follow-through, which when a defender's clearing a ball is a natural thing. He was always going to catch Sekumara. Painful one. He's holding his knee, which might indicate a twist, which might mean an early problem for Eddie Howe. They're not in a good way here. Swiss international who's been part of that rock solid partnership with Sven Botman. And are they going to have to make an early change here? Jamal Lascelles, who's found game time difficult to come by but did score in this competition. Nearly arounds against Tranmere Rovers. He may be needed. We will see because he stayed down. I think Eddie Howe having a look at that incident, but I think he will acknowledge that. Sekumara does nothing wrong, he actually makes the block, and it's the follow-through of Fabian Scher. Catches Mara on the way through, and that's what maybe opens that knee out a little bit. Watch this. That knee there just gets opened out. You can see the way he spins with the impact. He didn't do anything wrong, but it may have telling ramifications for Newcastle United here. Yes, for Eddie Howe, an early concern. And of course he's put out the strongest side, the strongest side he feels he can put out at the moment. Because managers always get asked in these competitions, are you going to rest players, are you going to rotate? But when you're in form, take the strongest side, they say sometimes. I just remember, they haven't won a major trophy since 1969. I think he might have been in massive trouble with the Newcastle elements had he not picked a strong side, Eddie Howe, to be fair. These Newcastle fans, they're in dreamland, looking at a top four finish as a, a genuine possibility, and they're also looking at the possibility of winning a trophy, and that's what they crave more than anything. Especially when you get this far into the competition. Knocked out. In the third round of the FA Cup to Sheffield Wednesday. The team was, of course, changed for that, but this is the same side. They drew with Crystal Palace, beat Fulham. Orsic. Side to Alcraz, he's looking to link up and looking sharp early on. Orsic has to cut inside on that right foot. Flag went up there, disappointment for Southampton at first. True foray forward. And a bit of pressure as well put on Almiron. And Almiron slipping as well. So I was slipping at the Premier League game between Tottenham and Fulham last night as well. Sort of conditions at this time of year. That's a loose pass. Tassar picked up by Almiron. You can't find the pass. And that enables Nala to break forward. Wartraus. Last roll, Gineppo. Actually tackled there by Joe Linton. Salison. I think that injury has just allowed Salampton maybe to settle down into this game a little bit. Yeah, they're on the attack. Carl Walker Peters. Find room to get the cross in instead. Ward Prowse. It in there towards Maro, who's really putting himself about early on. Maron escapes his attention. And stuff can't get out. It's interesting, Nathan Jones has sprung a little bit of a surprise in that he's playing Lianco as a central defender next to Chalata Sarp. Kyle Walker Peters on the right, where we may have thought he might have been on the left. Salisu is out on this left-hand side, and I just wonder what the thinking behind that is. Very athletic, maybe, to try and nullify Miguel Almiron on this side. Interesting, because four, the game 
against Aston Villa. So the same personnel. So many different positions. Zunu, only as far as Joel Linton. No Gimarais. Seems to hear a share. Seems, ball. seems to have recovered, doesn't he, Fabian Scher? That's good news. But they've lost it here in Newcastle with a man down in Almiron. The Southampton looking to take advantage. Orsic wanted to cut back inside. It is a familiar sight in his game. Slav Orsic. He's a player who's, as I said, very, very quick. But also wants to try and get directed defences. He set up the goal for Bruno Petkovic that equalised against Brazil and eventually saw Croatia beat one of the favourites for the tournament on penalties. An experienced player for Nathan Jones to add to the Southampton squad. A squad that needs experience. It's there. New format, isn't it, really, recruiting young. It's the direction the club have decided to go. It's a little bit of a gamble. With youth, you can often get inconsistency. It's a long ball played over the top towards Wilson. They did well to let Mizuno. To move the close attention of Wilson there. Diallo. Ward Prowse. I'll tell you what, when the ball goes dead, both teams really keen to get it back in play very, very quickly, which is pretty refreshing. The teams might be a bit more cagey. In the first leg, but there's also because the school have thought that they might just they can come fast and early and get that early goal. This is a good platform. Bruno Gimarais looking for Willock, who covers so much ground for this side. Two in the middle to aim for Wilson. Chance then, maybe of taking it first time. Feels for handball, but Newcastle trying to find a way through in the challenge. Going in there from Salasu. And Longstaff is down. And did he get the ball there, Salasu? Did he get a bit of the man as well? He clearly got a bit of the man. And we do have VAR tonight at this stage of the competition with two Premier League sides. Andre Mariner. I just heard in my ear, check complete, those famous words that the defending team are usually looking for. He just gets enough of the ball, there's no question. That is not a penalty. That's a good decision on field from Stuart Atwell. And once Callum Wilson elects to take a touch, he doesn't get it right, and then the opportunity is gone for him, but they recycle it. It's a good challenge from Sally Sue. Oh, just referee just trying to calm things down here. And as you said, Don Stewart Atwell, the man in the middle, who was the referee for the 4-1 victory for Newcastle on this ground. Well, that was an interesting game because the scoreline says that Newcastle absolutely smashed Southampton. It wasn't like that at all. It was a case of his team being clinical and ruthless with their opportunities and Southampton wasteful. On the day. Well, set piece for Trippier and he plays it short. It's going long into that penalty area. To through their lines. Willock. Burn. Look again. Sends it forward. Mara away. Diallo. That's the free kick, gets it. Trying to get the balance of that midfield right, Southampton. We've got Romeo Lavia has really stood out since signing from Manchester City. And it's a midfield tonight of Diallo, the new man Alcaraz, Will Prowse, fast of that midfield. A new role for him, really. Can they make a sign in like. Alcaraz, as you are keen to get him in there from the start. Signed from the 
Racing club in Argentina. Just like Orsic has made an appearance off the bench for Southampton already. Both making full debuts tonight. Here is Alcaraz. Mara. Ward Prowse. Alcaraz arriving. Just enough of a touch in the end. I think it was Cher. It wasn't dissimilar to the move that led to Seiko Mara scoring that opening goal against Manchester City. Newcastle defence slightly more alert than the Manchester City defence were, and they had to be. It's a representation of why they are the best defence in the Premier League. It's Fabian Cher there, brilliant from the defender. This game being played at a decent pace indeed. And a promising start. Outside, positive intention here to try and score early. Almiron using Trippier. And Trippier ah, played it across. To Villa Gamble, perhaps. Didn't know the pace it was coming at, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think Joe Willock is anticipating Kieran Trippier rolling this ball square and across. Maybe the edge of that six-yard line, so he gets himself in, and it just curls behind him, actually. Doesn't do much wrong there, Joe Willock. Just a bit too much pace on the ball from Trippier. But once again, Newcastle looking a threat. Mara. Pressure on Alcaraz. And a confident play. Newcastle United, you can see, and I think that's quite an important stat. I mean, there are some stats that don't mean too much in a game, but that touches in an opponent's box. That, box, that means you really are on the front foot, and that's Newcastle dominating in that regard. And maybe that's why he's not happy, or part of the reason, anyway. Shutting forward again here, Newcastle. Plenty forward as well, Almiron. Trippier. Oh, Willock. Trippier. In it goes, Bruno Gimmerais. That's all his feet out. And Southampton, their turn to surge forward. And Mara. They were testing Cher there. And it's a waste, really, because they had two men to the left. Also had Orsic. Karaz played that ball too soon. You know what, there's no rest in this game at the moment. Wilson. Some options here for Newcastle when they attack in this game, committing a lot of bodies forward, though. Yeah, some brilliant, brilliant energy out there. Eddie Howe's team being true to his word. They have come here to get on the front foot and attack. It's a corner kick to Newcastle United. Hampton, all the bodies back in their own penalty area. Played short to Almiron, and back in again by Trippier. Pushed away by Bazzulu. One back in again through Cher. Sue away. Here's Pope. Cher. Burn. One of the goals against Leicester City in the last round. His first goal for the club. Alcaraz. By Byrne, they're given away by Byrne. And space to Gineppo. There's been a few of those sort of moments so far. Yeah. It's really unlike James Ward-Prowse, it's not a difficult pass for a player of his ability, for any professional player, really. 
Well over hit. Opportunity gone. I think Newcastle have settled the best here. Of the two teams they look comfortable out there. Bruno Gimma Rice and out a bit of room, and that could spell danger for Southampton. He's picked out Longstaff. Almiron. Bruno Gimma Rice back for Almiron. It was all a bit intricate. And Bazunu did want to come out there. As he quartered, he was coming out as well, maybe on the fingers. Uh, takes risks, doesn't he? With his passing, Bruno Gimma Rice, he doesn't look for the obvious easy one. Kieran Trippier was out. He just tried to slot his teammate through. There was a coming together. I think it's worse than the fingers. Caught on the nose by it. Almiron, I believe. Yeah. Almiron's there, looking to really hurt Southampton. Fraction over hit, but... Almiron can't stop himself. You can see there, his left shin does catch. Mazzuno on the nose, painful one. Gineppo, a few instructions from his manager, Nathan Jones. Yeah, who came into a place for our passing who tours, well, actually one of the longest serving managers in the Premier League in four years. That's the way things are now. Yeah, they haven't been able to get Musa Gineppo on the ball yet. Well, it's the Alan Shearer derby, this one. As we love to say, people, some people of a certain generation might forget that he played for Southampton. Yeah, not me, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Definitely wasn't saying you, Tom. We won't guess who he wants to win this, shall we? Ooh, yes, exactly. Another good miss. Well, here comes a new shirt, new green shirt. Oh, the bit of blood on it from Azunu. But he's going to just carry on. But Alcaraz, his new man in the middle. His first start, his last game in Argentina. Part of a match against Boca Juniors in which ten players were sent off, including Alcaraz himself. When I think when supporters hear stories like that, in a weird way they get excited about a player, don't they? Was VAR in operation? Do we know? <laughs> I don't think so. There might have been 12 players off then. Yeah. Here's Diallo. Diallo out to Orsic. The touch from him, first inside, you know, said a trademark of his game. Just uh, here for Trippier. We said about him not getting involved in the game, and it's him and his teammate Orsic, and really just signifies that Newcastle have started this game the better of the two teams really Southampton have to find a way of getting those two wide players a lot more involved in this game Cher can off that in trouble for now Willock Willock waiting for Burn Willock again Rice across to Cher Botman, Burn, Burn, just got away with that one. A touch there for Gineppo. <laughs> Maybe Nathan Jones was talking about his game with and without the ball. Joel Linton, Willock, those two like to combine on the left-hand side, Willock almost finding Wilson. All defensive work for Gineppo.
Gineppo doing everything for that ball to go out to play, and he has earned a goal kick just about. Just about indeed, yeah. Getting a pat on the shoulder there from Jan Pindarek, who's returned to Southampton after his spell at Aston Villa. Really didn't get much game time there. And at international level, he's lost his place to Arsenal's new signing, Ekim Kivio. Once again, it's a, an acknowledgement that maybe they do need a little bit of experience for what remains of this season and the relegation battle they find themselves in. Amaron to Salasu. Mara. Good start from him, full of energy. Pass out to the right hand side, but it did hit the referee. Always apologise. There's a bit of confusion as to who had the ball here. I thought it was Southampton, if I'm honest with you. I'm not sure Stuart Atwell knows. You can hear what the home fans think about that. Their last touch was off a Newcastle player, not that they had it under control. Here's Cher. Cher back to Botman. And Botman. Just getting it forward straight away. Gineppo. Uh, flip back inside straight to a Newcastle player. What the sort of touch is, I sort of Don shaking his head there. <laughs> they won't endear himself to Nathan Jones doing flicks like that on, in that area of the pitch and giving the ball back to Newcastle. Trippier looking for Almiron who looked offside, but Salasu plucked that one out of the sky. Cesar. The new signings for the season as a whole. They're trying to have a little bit of control, Southampton, with the ball, and Newcastle simply not allowing them to do that. It's all very rushed from the home team. So the difference in the demeanour of the two managers, and I know there is a difference in how they are, Eddie Howe, much more relaxed. And Jones a bit disappointed in the opening 26 minutes. Newcastle are in control, but the telling thing is they haven't tested Gavin Bazunu in the Southampton goal yet. No amount of similarities this game to the Crystal Palace, the first half of the Crystal Palace game. Newcastle, plenty of thrust going forward. Oh, this could be a bit of a problem for Botman, but he got out of trouble. In the end, the big Dutchman. Alcaraz. He couldn't find the pass. And here's Almiron. Can he get there first? Oh, he did get there first. And Chaleta Saar. Surely he's going to be booked here. Yes, he is. I think they're having a discussion, Stuart Atwell and his assistant on this side as to the colour of this card. I think it's the right choice. He's not subtle. Chaleta Saar. It's a blatant, cynical foul, but one that he has to make. And had he gone any higher, he'd have been off, but he just about, as he lands, his left foot is on the ground, and I think that's why it's a yellow card. Yeah, so not much complaint, really, from the Croatian. It was international teammate in the Southampton side in Orsic. But now Moron. be okay to continue but for now some treatment but this is a good sort of position here for Trippier it's really impressive Chaleta Saar it's one of those when a defender cleans you out like that there are any number of things that can happen to your body twist an ankle it's like where they're looking at twist the knee see a little bit of pain here Really, never looked like he was going to get there, Chilitasar. I suppose in that sort of situation, he's thinking, well, I've just got to bring the man down. There are a variety of ways to do that. He chose the aggressive way. Andy Howe, just hoping his man Almiron's going to be able to continue. One of the informed players. 
Portuguese side of the Premier League. One of the best peace takers in the Premier League here in Trippier. This free kick for Newcastle. Who can he pick out? Botman in there. Cher is in there. They're a big side, Newcastle. Dan Byrne waiting as well. Defended actually by Ward Prowse. And is there a break on here? Oh, just so close to helping that on to Alcaraz. Yeah. And Forsic wins that header. Alcaraz is in. That would have left Eddie Howe absolutely fuming. Bit head tennis here, isn't it? Southampton, if he wins that, look at Alcaraz there. He's away. Made me chuckle a bit there was Alcaraz. Sort of Bruno Gimaraes with the ball and ran after to try and get it off him. Argentina, Brazil, and all that. Trippier. Here's Almiron. Cher. Goes the cross. On his way to Joel Linton. Does. On his way there. He's held up. Willock. Linton. Nice. Scoop that ball over towards Almiron. Here's Mara. This is where you think Hamilton might get some success. There was a high arm there from Gimaraes. Maybe not high enough to be something that VAR would need to really take close attention on. It's a foul, that's the end of it. I mean, he does feel to try and block Mara there, and he clearly catches him in the face, but it's a player stretching, exerting, trying to hold another player off. Foul, nothing more. I think Newcastle will just be pleased he's on the pitch for them at the moment. Going to race, ball played for Woods, a trip here, back towards Orsic. He makes such a difference, doesn't he? Bruno Gamaris. Massive difference in every conceivable way to this team. With and without the ball, he's a midfielder that can literally do it all. Part of me just wants to call him Bruno G. <laughs> Sounds quite important. And it is on the back of his shirt. I think Ali might have something to say about that one. <laughs> yeah. All play forwards. Towards Joel Linton. Going to pull it back towards Almiron. Again, Southampton a chance to counter. Also looking to really snuff that out if they can, and they do just that against Walker Peters. Hasn't been able to get forward too much. The Saints fall back. I think it's been Newcastle pushing him back the other way, isn't it? As I said, you don't feel Southampton have got any real control of the football when they have it. But there's been one or two scenarios where a little counter-attack is on if they play it right. Yeah, it's one of those opportunities. Borsic. Diallo. Michael Peters. Gineppo. Nice touch. And you get away from Willock. Poe, too much to do in the end. It wasn't that he had too much to do, he held on to it too long. He had a chance to whip that ball in. There were players in the penalty area waiting for it. Lovely bit of skill, but he wanted to do more, and that's about that decision making in the final third. I'm still thinking of your Ali G rip. Really. No relation. <laughs> well, Yanko has wiped the ball. Going to try to launch long throw into the penalty area here. Start with by Byrne and Wilson. And Newcastle get away here with Almiron. Trippier. Almiron. And Staff. Almiron. Trippier. Plenty forward waiting for the cross. John Linton there. Willock's there. He's flashed it over again in this game. Well, this is brilliance from Miguel Almiron, from Kieran Trippier. Absolutely brilliant. They turn defence into attack. Joe Linton uses his body superbly well there. That gives Joe Willock a free hit. 
has no composure. Just thrashes at the ball. And skies it. Maybe gave him an excuse for the left-footed strike earlier on. Can't give him any excuses there. He's got three goals in his career against Southampton for Arsenal and Newcastle. But a midfielder who went on that goal-scoring run, which convinced Newcastle to sign him permanently from Arsenal. He has been a permanent member of this side, but he's also often substituted by Eddie Howe in the second half. Didn't like it in the Palace game when it happened. Orsic. Here's Mara. Rare attack for Southampton. Mara. Mara! That take a touch, it did. He looks sharp, doesn't he? Of the three forwards, he's the one who looks like he could make something happen for Southampton. Just drives inside, prepared to take the strike. Wins his team a corner. His only goal for Southampton was in the previous round against Manchester City. You are going to score your goals and it comes in a good cup run. Always be remembered. Gineppo to take this corner. Just to play it short to Warprouse. Just let the man take it. <laughs> I was wondering why Gineppo was taking that corner. Anyway, Warprouse. Switching it towards Mara. Newcastle will get it away. I didn't like the fact that Diallo chose to go back. <laughs> and Walker Peters does the same. Bazunu. Botman. Commanding in the air. Alcaraz. Walker Peters wanted the ball played towards him, but it didn't find him. And uh, oh, a bit of tugging. This is going to be a yellow card for Alcaraz. He's saying it's the first one. It doesn't matter when you're that cynical. There's your Argentina for Brazil, the <laughs> one that you were after. Not subtle. Can't get away with that. I'm not going to translate what Bruno Gimrai said to him. Put it this way, he wasn't happy. And I mentioned in his last game in Argentina, he was sent off Alcaraz. He's on a yellow now. John Linton. The Brazilian on the pitch. For Newcastle. Trippier. Nice again. Rosic. Can't get the ball off him. In control from the Brazilian. Trippier, Stuff couldn't do much with that. Trippier, gets it back. Southampton can't get out for the moment. Wilson, Almiron, Almiron. That's blocked, they've got a lot of, lot of bodies back there, Southampton. Diallo bringing it away. And he'll look for Mara. And Cher does well, well, not well enough, actually. A real rear guard action from Southampton, and I'm not sure it's by design. I just think Newcastle putting them under so much pressure. Bruno Guimaraes dominating that midfield area, really. In reality, and down this right hand side, Trippier and Almiron causing all kinds of problems. Maybe not tested the goalkeeper enough, though, in Bazunu. No. Absolutely not. This is, of course, just the first leg. Semi-final, the second semi-final is tomorrow. Forest against Manchester United. Newcastle driving forward. Will it chip him back inside? Saved by Mazzuno. There's plenty to follow up. It's Joel Linton. But the whistle has gone. And Newcastle don't know why. But Stuart Atwill isn't going to allow this one for the moment. Maybe for a foul on Salasu. Well, if that's given as a foul, I'm not really sure. There's a natural coming together when two players, a defender and an attacker, Callum Wilson and Salisu, does it bounce up and hit 
Joe Linton in the arm. That's what VAR are looking at. That's what he's protesting. Didn't happen. Certainly was no foul in there. So the handball is all that it can be. Brilliant from Willock. Fantastic save, but as this ball bounces up, which part of Joe Linton's anatomy does it hit? This, they tell us, Sally Sue does so well there. Oh, that's a tight one. Well, the check is complete. The goal won't stand. And I fancy when it is tight like that, they just go with the on-field decision. Yeah. They try to make that point, Howard Webb. Well, what I will say is Mohamed Salisu has just saved his team from going behind because the defending, it was brave, it was strong. Standing from him, he got hurt in the process, but he won't mind that. Especially now he can run around. Johansson winning that ball in the air, he thought. He'd open the scoring. It's still goalless at St Mary's. Five minutes to go until half time. Trippier. Penalty was pushed and does get the decision in the end. But you mentioned it, Don, as well. You want Southampton to get their wingers into the game a bit more. Control the ball a little bit more. I mean, his team have been brilliant. The exception of really testing Bazunu. Ironically, they did just there. The goal ruled out for handball. But it was the first save that Gavin Bazunu has had to make. All given away again. One thing you say about Southampton, they have been on the wrong end of some fine margins in games. Maybe it's a little bit of a break that they needed. Lost by Trippier. And here's Diallo. Now urging Southampton forward here. Alcaraz. Alcaraz! It was awkward for Pope. He didn't, wasn't quite sure what to do without the England goalkeeper. Well, the one thing he was sure that he had to do was fist it away because it's spinning, it's dipping, and it bounces just in front of him. It's really awkward. He almost dives past it. Nick Pope here has to stretch back with that right hand and in the end it's a decent save Ward Prowse with the corner for Southampton late in the first half Diallo Orsic clips it back in there Pope will get there first and look to get Newcastle on their way one back, Diallo, oh, couldn't work it inside, oh, Prowse was lurking. Cher, finds Trippier with a terrific ball, and what could Trippier do here? And Rice, Almiron. Trippier, inside, Longstaff, Burn, out to Willock, a bit too out to Willock. I'm not really sure what Sean Longstaff was doing there, kind of was that in, but Joe Linton is the centre of this debate here. Does it catch him on the arm as it bounces up from Salisu? Not conclusive as far as I can see. Could hit his side, could his, hit his arm, could come off his side onto his arm. It's really not conclusive, and that's why they would always go with the on field decision. I mean, if a VAR is looking at that, you can't tell whether that's the side or the arm, really, can you? And that's why they have to stick with the on field decision. Stated by Howard Webb, head of referees now in England, not looking to really overturn what the recommend 
the referee overturns his initial decision. They try and stick to the on-field decision as much as possible. Ball played forward and Pope came a long way. Now Pope got there first, but he took the man as well. It will be a free kick. Yeah, this is one of those comings together, a natural coming together where a player is going to head a ball. He's going to head the ball and then his momentum is going to take him into the opponent. There's nothing Nick Pope can do in reality. Actually, I'd go as far as to say he's a little bit unlucky to concede a free kick for that. It's a, it's a really strong coming together, but he had to head that away. But then he couldn't stop himself. The official has indicated there will be a minimum of four minutes additional time at the end of the first well, Walker Peters actually picked up a yellow card, delaying the restart to a throw in a moment ago. But even though Pope got there first, it's clearly colliding with Gineppo yeah. like that's going to cause him a yeah. bit of a problem. Absolutely, his momentum. Southampton bench in discussions with the fourth official. Maybe they wanted more than a free kick. It's Gineppo who scored that brilliant goal, I have to say, really, against Manchester City. Opportunism and ball over the goalkeeper Ortega, but hopefully he'll be able to continue in this game. We're into four added minutes. I imagine we'll have a few more than that. And a crossing position here for Ward Prowse. Pope has gone over, did go over to Gineppo to offer an apology and check he was okay. Good to see. Well, the fact these two clubs waited so long for silverware, an added dimension to this semi final. There's no suggestion, really, when you really think about it, that they were going to put second string teams out or anything like that. But they've gone strong. Nathan Jones, the changes he's made, well he's put in the new signings and he's put in two players who helped them beat Manchester City. So sensible changes you would say. And Alcaraz has caught the eye in this first half, good and bad reasons. That's Gineppo, we, in these sort of scenarios, we just have to push them out of half time so they can get there but I don't know whether it was a bit of whiplash more than a bang to the head, really. It was just a really heavy coming together. You have to be super careful with that, the medical team. So, referee hasn't given a free kick, actually. He's going to throw in. Yeah, on we go. Gillette Assam. Trippier. It back to share Trippier and it goes towards Willock Just a few off passes in this first half Gineppo he's not going to continue in this game so it's a familiar face for Newcastle United fans coming on it's Adam Armstrong the first substitution Once for the Saints. The player coming on. Black and White. Left the club in 2018 to Blackburn. North Southampton. Facing his old club. Born in Newcastle. Boyhood fan of the club. But still want to score tonight, Don. Oh, 100%. He wins that ball back. Emergency straight away off the bench. Walker Peters. Or Krause, just to confirm that substitution. A concussion substitution, so he was. Watching away. Just said they didn't want to take any chances there, so back to Walker Peters. Able to get forward. Ball into the penalty area, easily dealt with by Botman. Alcaraz. Wilson. 
Almiron wants the ball played through the middle. Here is Almiron. Salasu is not going to let him out. Working so hard. <laughs> well, there we have it. I think when we were looking at why Nathan Jones had put Mohamed Salasu at left back, I think we've just seen why. Brilliant. Played four minutes of added time, but of course, when that board was held up, Ginefo was down. Now, just a little word for Musa Ginepo. It's really, really unfortunate. It's such a massive game for him to have to leave the field. Really unfortunate. But Nick Pope made the challenge he had to make. Mara. To stretch Botman here. Mara. Give him a nice helping out. Brilliant. Morris, absolutely brilliant. That's what I'm saying about a player who does every everything. Tackles, he intercepts. And when he's on the ball, his quality speaks for itself. Willock. Southampton benefiting from a disallowed goal and right in the game against Aston Villa. Trippier. Shits back there. Alcaraz. Diallo. Just about his first thought often in this first half is to look back, but numerous spell trouble for him. Here's Mara. And Mara. A decent first half. He's been the shining light for Southampton, hasn't he? Those forward players, they haven't really been able to get James Ward-Prowse involved. Gineppo, when he was on, on the pitch, or Orsic, Orsic. Well, Newcastle United thought they'd taken the lead when Joel Linton put the ball into the net, but the goal disallowed for handball against the Brazilian. Nick Pope still set for a clean sheet. And Joel Willock wasting two chances for the visitors. Hey, do Marker looking very bright indeed. Half-time, 0-0. Uh, well, the teams are back up. A lot of attention on Stuart Atwell after that first 45 minutes. We are ready to go again. Let's rejoin Don and Sam. No changes from either side at half time. A nil nil. Well, will either side change their approach in this second half, Don? Well, I think if you're Southampton, you have to find. 10, 15, 20% more because otherwise I think you're going to lose here and I think if you lose here you lose this semi-final so it's a big 45 minutes I think more so for Southampton than for Newcastle who did dominate he would be aware, aware of that and mindful of that there were times in that first half he really wasn't happy with his team as his team just again a little bit like the Crystal Palace game really good to a point just not quite making the right choices in the final third a game that ended goalless all this one in goalless a whole half to watch here and you feel with this newcastle team and they do get their noses in front that has been a bit of a problem for them recently and they're going to be tough to break down the league leaders in the premier league found at the emirates not that long ago but that's lost by Byrne. Armstrong came on in the first half for Gineppo. Armstrong, the cross is not that bad at all. And Willock just giving it straight back to Southampton. Almiron is having this, this tussle with Salasu. Has he got away from Salasu here? Almiron across. Alcross won't get there. And it's put over by Longstaff. Well, the chances simply falling to the wrong players with respect. Joe Willock has ballooned to it's his midfield partner, Sean Langstaff. But how brilliant is that from Miguel Almiron? Absolutely sensational, just like the season he's had. But unfortunately for Sean Longstaff, that finish 
is not so brilliant. It's nowhere near good enough, and it's another opportunity that's gone begging. Now Marauders look very bright tonight, just as he has for most of the season, and not going till with Salasu. Followed him to that side. Looking at the Southampton set, and there doesn't appear any obvious change. I, I wondered whether or not Nathan Jones would drop James Ward Prowse a little deeper, so he'd get more involved and maybe boost the numbers in that midfield area because the midfield area is where Newcastle are dominating this game. It's forward nicely, actually, by Ward Prowse towards Ward Prowse, I should say. And Pope. And Mara will put pressure on Pope. And the pass from Cher wasn't the best. Alcaraz. Diallo. Ward Prowse. Diallo. Southampton force packed. And it's a so pretty calm in the end to get that to Bazunu, who's equally calm. There's something about goalkeepers doing attempted point turns. Three point turns. I'm saying nothing. Zuno again. <laughs> Back it goes to Gilletta Saar. It's a bit messy and share. Awkward up and under for Lianco, who deals with it well. Will be a throw in. You mentioned Willock and lost up a moment ago, Don, but they, those two alongside Kira Trippier have featured in every game for Newcastle this season. Mara. And an over over Southampton. He couldn't get a pass away. He yeah, has to get his head up to get his head up because to his left there's a brilliant situation involving Walker Peters just a little bit of a notch from Bruno Gimarais but Armstrong gets away from Botman Mara ambitious acrobatic but wide well, I said the first half he had been the shining light for Southampton confidence flowing through his veins to the point where he's prepared to try that. It's a pretty decent effort. And it comes most used sub this season, Mara. Starting tonight. Well, he has been really important. Highlighted him before the game. He's more than just about set pieces. He's almost plays like a right winger at times. Heavily involved in Newcastle. Trippier put under pressure there by Orsic. Here yeah, Newcastle shirts there to help out share one of them. Rescue the situation. Will it be a mistake that leads to the opening goal in this game? I mean, we did just pick Trippier out, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. And now Sam Axel warming up for Newcastle. Shea Adams warming up for Southampton. Need a goal to warm this game up. And then across. Walker Peters towards Mara. Mara flicking it towards Ward Prowse. This is going to break to Willock. What a work. Joe Willock to do here, and he got to take on Diallo, who read his intentions. Well, that's the strength, isn't it? Ibrahima Diallo, without the ball, defensive work. Sarasulo, Cher, to Trippier, and on to Longstaff, and on to Almiron. But Salasu watched him strike the stride, and Almiron very quickly you just hope that's yeah. him saying I'm not going to keep that in rather than muscle injury he's not limping so I presume that's what he's doing he's saying I can't get that save the legs seems to be 
Sergio K. Almiron. Southampton just about okay getting that ball out of defence. Longstaff to Gimaraes. Shields that ball so well. So difficult to dispossess. He just caught there. His boots. Here's Almiron. Looking to link up, gets it back, Almiron, across, and surely no! Joel Linton, a huge miss in this semi-final for all the world. You thought the Brazilian was going to score. Well, all I've got is that he takes this for granted. That's all I've got, really, because I'm looking for a reason that this ball ends up over the bar. And it's brilliant again from Almiron, and that is on a plate. All he's got to do is say, right, keep it low. His team are 1-0 up. Once again, it's wasteful in the extreme. It's probably easier than the one that he was penalised for for handball. I wonder whether he and Newcastle will rue that. He knows he's made the end-of-season compilation with that one. Gonna be a free kick for the challenge on Wilson. Samadozi, another of the Manchester City players. That's come on. Almiron. Oh, and Bazuna got a touch. And Botman can't force it in. Chance is coming for Newcastle. Yeah, this is maybe a half chance rather than a chance. Once again, quick thinking. And Kieran Trippier sets Almiron away and as Botman arrives at the, the far post I don't know whether he's deliberately going for that near post and if he is he shouldn't be he should be going back into the meat of the goal maybe the wrong man in the wrong place at the wrong time for Newcastle Travelling fans of the Toon Army willing their side to a positive result on the south coast and they've had their chances. Cher towards Wilson. There's Lianco away by Salasu. Mara. Orsic, Ward Prowse, Alcaraz, Walker Peters collects. And there's men over here for Southampton at the back post. Walker Peters held it up. Mara can't get round Gimaraes, who can't keep it in. Corner. Well, it was on, it was good movement from Kyle Walker Peters initially, but then they doubled up on him. Consolation of a corner. A rare chance to get forward for the home side. And Orsic may be about to come off here. Radozzi is going to take this corner for Southampton. Can they test Pope? Orsic's corner, not the best, but he still makes something of it, Mara enough to cause Pope any problems and he looks to release Willock and it almost found its way through instead it's Orsic looking for the 1-2 Armstrong looks to roll burn and he's done just that Armstrong past a couple of challenges Armstrong well that would have been quite something well that is one of the few things that have got this Southampton crowd off the feet brilliant from Adam Armstrong he thought he may have lost it just somewhere there look but Low centre of gravity, good balance. Quite keep the strike on the target. But he's looked lively since he's come on. To say, desperate to make something happen for his team. Well, speaking of lively, you can apply that to Mara, but he's about to come off here for Shea Adams. Slavosic. The other man to leave the field and the other man to come on. Samuel Adozi still awaiting his first goal turns 20 on the 28th of January. Mara will go 
goal scoring moment for him tonight. where Sven Botman was going. Armstrong just peeled in, easily behind him, got away with it. Willock. Gimaraes, there's the press from Ward Prowse. Just escapes it. John Linton. Diallo. Well, that looked like a foul at first glance, but Southampton breaking forward. Walker Peters can't get round Burns. So it looked like a foul. I don't think John Linton was actually complaining in the end, but he's had a fabulous opportunity in this second half to win Newcastle the lead. But this game is still very tight. Salasu. Second chance to play that ball forward, and that's nice link up play. Adams Walker Peters Walker Peters goes down. Oh, was it on the edge? Was it even a foul? No. Stuart Atwell doesn't think so. No, he's got a brilliant position. Stuart Atwell here work so hard to position themselves, just eases him out, doesn't he? Joe Willock. It's the decision of the referee, who had a great view of it. Oh, Botman! What a place to slip, unfortunate for him. Will it be more fortunate for Southampton? Ward Prowse. Diallo. Caraz. Rosi. Caraz to Lianco. Walker Peters. Plenty of Newcastle shirts to get past here. I'll get past the first. Sam Matsuma. Surely going to join the action. Will it? Get foot in. Bring it away only as far as Ward Prowse. Armstrong. Diallo. Slide it through to Alcaraz, and here's Wilson, not quite. Hasn't had too many touches in this game, Callum Wilson. So far, and that's been Newcastle's problem as well. It's not really about their strikers finishing, just about feeding their striker. Well, they do a lot of unself unselfish work, the Newcastle strikers and wide players. Big chances have fallen to their midfield players. Willock, across it goes, long stuff. Sliding towards Wilson. Break on here for Southampton. Adams to a dozy, gets round Trippier. Promising for Southampton. A dozy couldn't find Burn. It's the last little piece, a great situation. Just going a bit end to end, isn't it, at the minute? Might potentially sweep Southampton. More than Newcastle, who have exerted large spells of control in this game. We're going to get a goal shortly. Sort of feels like it. Here's Almiron. Trippier. Alcaraz. Find Almiron. Alcaraz. Control Adams. Put it from Diallo to win that ball back. Walker Peters. Walker Peters going on. Good work to check back and play it in again. And it was just behind Ward Cross in the end. Good energy. Southampton and Kyle Walker Peters just 
becoming a little bit more prominent as an attacking force as this game goes on. It is behind Ward Prowse who can't stretch. Guide it on target. But already they've asked more questions of that Newcastle back line than they did in the whole of the first half, I would say. It's not happy. I think when the ball next goes out of play, Alisson Axelman is going to get a chance Ward Prowse Armstrong Alexander Isak is also going to come on expect it to be Willock and Wilson to the pass Fazunu to Salasu, running it on to no one. Nishe. Pope. What's that forward, Lianco? Long step. Bowman. And Byrne. So, with a possession here. I do not know the subs are waiting to come on. Bottman, he talks Almiron. Salasu in the way. Alcaraz sending it through. Goalkeeper thought about coming but didn't. Adams, Adams, Pope saves it. The best chance of the game for Southampton. Walker Peters. Strong run from the fullback and Pope swallows that one. Well, almost becoming unbeatable. You can see Botman plays him on side. He's deeper than the rest of his defence. But I'm looking at Jay Adams and I'm thinking, you don't really look convinced yourself that you're going to beat Nick Pope. It's a poor effort, really. I think Jay Adams has to do a lot better than that. Nathan Jones shares the same opinion. Big, big chance. First opportunity for the substitutes. Both sides have had big opportunities in this second half. Ward Prowse, Armstrong. Surely we're going to get a goal. Armstrong across. John Linton turns well. Willock won't get to that. Here's the anchor. Walker Peters has had a strong second half, wins a free kick. There has definitely been a little bit more about Southampton in the first 20 minutes of this second half, despite Newcastle having their moments. That, that fella there, Kyle Walker Peters, is testing Newcastle down this left hand side of theirs. And apologies, Don, if you see me jumping up and down. Just a little bit cold. Don't want to put you off. It's all right, I've got my back to you. <laughs> well, it's the man Southampton always look to to come up with the goods from set pieces. James Ward Prowse. He put in a good delivery here. Or well, maybe catch Pope out. We'll see. Ward Prowse, lovely bend on that. And Pope keeps Southampton out again. The danger not clear for Newcastle. And shots fired over by Lianco. But Pope, it's so tough to beat him at the moment. Yeah, he only had the one save in the first half from distance, but this time it's a good spin by Shea Adams. He hits the target, that's all he can do. Pope. Alive and alert, yet again. What a presence he is in that goal for Newcastle. You could argue well, that between him and Bruno Guimaraes, who the best signing has been. I mean, it's a it's a tough one to call, really. Both been outstanding. A shake of the head from Wilson, replaced by Isak. Will they get a chance to play each other? 
up soon, but Willock going off as well. And Alan San Maxima, who once upon a time was the most important player in the Newcastle team, you felt, but struggling for starts this season. That's what I was saying, the game just became a little bit of an end-to-end, -end, a bit of a basketball scenario, and I said that will suit Southampton more than Newcastle. And that's where they've had their opportunities and shots in the last five or ten minutes. Newcastle need to regain that control they had in the first half. The goalless draw isn't the worst result for either side. It's not the way they both played this game. Desperate to get that at first leg advantage, Armstrong. Helped on by Ward Prowse. Walker Peters, that took a little touch and helped Pope to claim. And out to Sam Maxima. First chance for him to go on a run. And he loves to go on a run. And he's worked it out to Almiral. And Newcastle carrying a dribbling threat on both wings now. Trippier. He can't find Almiral. And Alcaraz makes his fellow South American. Ward Prowse. Oh, going backwards. Crowd. Naughty. Should have released Adozi. Adozi had made a good run, hadn't he? Ward Prowse finds Adozi this time. Diallo. Diallo. Ward Prowse trying to force it through. It's Gimarice again. Ball just took his eye off the ball there. He almost held on to it. Instead, it's Alcaraz enjoying his full debut. Idozi. And he got past. Could be rather easily there. Yellow cards, and you felt it was coming. Now, well, I'll tell you what, if you're Southampton now, you ram that ball down Samuel Edozi's throat because that's not the first time he's done Kieran Trippier. Got to make it a long final 20, 25 minutes for Kieran Trippier. Into the book. Booked against Crystal Palace as well. Challenge on Zaha, and then Zaha went off shortly after that, but hopefully Badozi doesn't have to go off here. Just trying to shake off that challenge. A uh, chance for Ward-Prowse to swing one in. Well, you've always got that delivery of James Ward-Prowse, but you're up against a big, big team that will barely concede from set pieces. And you can be creative, come up with something. Ward Prowse, oh, that's a good header in there from Botman, will be a corner. I think Alcaraz misses this, you know, I think this is a big chance. Again, the delivery is sensational, but just keep your eye on Carlos Alcaraz, 26, goes up, misses it, and it just hits Botman and goes wide. That's a, an opportunity. Well spotted, Don. I mean, you nodding that one in. Corner for Southampton. Ward Prowse, high one, that's a to drink for Pope, who wants to get that ball out, Lianko trying to block him off, basketball style. Isak, San Maxima, nerves defenders San Maxima. Joel Linton, Trippier, plays it in, always missed by Chaleta Saar. Helped up by Lianco, they haven't cleared it effectively though. Set back in again, San Maxima. Danger for Southampton, promising for Newcastle. Oh, did he get that wrong? It almost worked out for them. There's a little back flick, back heel opportunity for Sean Longstaff. In the middle of all that. It's an open 
Nil nil at the moment. Here's Byrne. Cher. Not such a good recent record against Southampton. And Isak turns well. Isak midway for Jorrenton. Oh, he scores this time. The Magpies make the first move in the semi final. And Joel Linton, the man reborn, with a finish for the work of Isak. Well, that helps the Toon Army a lot. 1 0 Newcastle United. Well, you kind of figured a goal had been coming in this game, but as it gone on, you weren't really sure whether it was going to be Newcastle or Southampton. They both had chances, but Joe Linton, he's missed an absolute sitter, but I don't think there is any possibility of anybody missing this one. But here's the credit, look where Joe Linton is, he's on the edge of the centre circle, and he sniffs that Isak may well just do his marker, and look at that energy in the movement, yes, it's brilliant skill from Alexander Isak, but the run and the desire from Joe Linton matches that skill because if you haven't got that you do not score that goal absolutely wonderful all round from Newcastle United but what a substitution by Eddie Howe to bring Alexander Isak onto the field well Isak coming off the bench to put one on a plate for Joe Linton who's such a popular player amongst the Newcastle United supporters it's almost like the players and the fans alike just stick up for him all the time and he's repaid their faith in him with some excellent performances over the last couple of years and a very important goal in this tie. Well, he'll be relieved, won't he, because the one he missed, he should never have missed. Armstrong, who's looked bright. Ward-Prowse sending it in towards Adams. Edozi... Armstrong! Armstrong! The ex-Newcastle man levels things up for Southampton. And they strike right back to the Saints. Well, what a game. What a game we have here. Ruth nearly came off St Mary's little shake of the head from Joel Linton but Adam Armstrong has looked lively and he's really heavily involved he picks the ball up here he drives and he ends up on the ground watch this now the ball evolves and it's runs on but he picks himself up and gets in between the sticks because he sniffs out a chance and that's his reward there is a VAR check on going for handball from Armstrong. Does this ball go in the net off his arm? Oh. I just thought the way it ended up, I thought yeah, it might have been an own goal the way it ended up in the back of the net. Oh, it hits his hand, then comes off Dan Burns' knee by the looks of that. Well, we await with bated breath. I mean, the fact it hits his hand then goes on to Dan Burns' knee, where does the law stand on that? It's an interesting one because it hits his hand and that's not the reason it ends up in the net. So this is going to be fascinating. Well, I don't think we can comment any further. We await the recommendation of Andre Mariner. A big call in this game. It's a tough one, isn't it? And this one is not going to count, we're hearing. It's not going to count. Disappointment for Southampton. Disappointment for Adam Armstrong. Denied a goal against his boyhood club. Decision, no goal, handball. Well, you can't believe it. I mean, I would, I, I'd, I'd love to know an official interpretation of the rule because I don't see that it goes straight in off his arm, off his hand. 
There's an element of me that thinks it hits his hand, then hits Dan Byrne on the knee, and that's the reason it ends up in the net. But we need clarification. He's pointing Stuart Atwell to the big screen at St Mary's. It bounces up there, off Dan Byrne's thigh, hits him on the arm, hits Dan Byrne's knee, then goes in. Now, the crowd getting to see this. Or does it actually hit his own knee and then go in? That's the only thing. The two knees are together. And if it comes off Adam Armstrong's knee, well, I'll leave that to the experts. Who are the experts? Though? <laughs> Not me, where that's concerned. So, Maximo. Oh, Gimmer Ice. Not like he handled it himself. And Diallo asking for a yellow card for Stuart Atwell. There's a lot of fire in this game. Incidentally, Almiron went off and Jacob Murphy has come on. And Newcastle United lead. For Southampton had leveled things up. Some big moments in this game. Some big calls. So another one where Southampton are going to think may have come out the wrong side of the fine lines. Game. Where hands have played a big part. Nathan Jones, frustration. Huge frustration. Botman. Sam Maxima, whose introduction, you feel, has just got Walker Peters looking over his shoulder. He's been prominent, hasn't he, Kyle Walker Peters? I mean, regardless of the fact that goal has been ruled out, it has been a much, much better second half from Southampton. And they've got to keep going because, in reality, I do honestly feel that they need to get at least an equaliser here to give themselves a realistic opportunity. Well, scoring against Newcastle United is tough enough. And I believe it's only Bayern Munich and Lons in France. They've lost as few games as Newcastle United have all season. Just two defeats for the Magpies to Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup and a very, very late goal at Anfield to Liverpool. That was the last time that Nick Pope conceded more than one goal for his club. Lianco. Gimaraes. And Gimaraes linking up again, Isak. That's... Nice play, and Sam Maxima to run at Walker Peters and helping it on to Isak. And those two have really made a difference since coming on, although that's come off Isak. But a big signing he was for Newcastle, the Swede, and had injury issues, and a big impact late on against Fulham, the winner, and he's helped create what might be the winner in this one. And Diallo. He's done well to break the play up. He's going to make way. Romeo Lavia, a very, very talented midfield player. He's really caught the eye in the short time he's been at Southampton after signing for Manchester City. He's recently turned 19. Azuno is charged down by Murphy. Celebrated it like a goal, that got the Newcastle crowd going. Brazilian flags are out. Fair to say they're happy at the moment, the Newcastle United fans. And a bit of relief as well. Dunsey 
near side. Lianko. Walker Peters. Coletta Saar. Dozy trying to sneak in behind Trippier. I think the key for Southampton is they have to try and get the ball out to a Dozy. 1v1, try and isolate him with Trippier. There's a lovely touch in there from Saint Maximin. Gimmo Rice, Southampton battling, they're battling a bit too hard, and Lianco. And Gimmo Rice, Brazilian on Brazilian. And it just moved over a little bit there, and a bit of calming down to do for Stuart Atwell, and the yellow card is out. But Lianco is naughty, but that's how he plays, he plays on the edge. If you take that away from him, he might not quite be the same player. And that's why the Southampton fans love him. He's got that raw aggression. He can walk away all he wants from Stuart Atwell. He's not going to get away with that. Certainly no patriotism there, was it? Absolutely not. And so Maxima booked as well for running in and pushing Lianco. Eddie Howe will not mind that. Teammates sticking up for each other. That's how it should be. Nothing else really to sort out here. <laughs> should that we're just checking what number Sir Maximan is. He gets fouled, he pulls him down there. But what on earth he's doing with that, I don't know. The officials have dealt with that perfectly. Yeah. Stuart Atwell said. It's not worth it. Well, free kick here for Newcastle, leading at St Mary's. Again, drawing to a close here. And you feel the visitors could get a second. I feel one foot in the final. Here. A little clip in there, and Pazunu, easy for him. He'll want to get on with it here for Southampton. What is that? Just that awkward angle, isn't it? For a free kick, a little bit narrow. Lavier on to Salasu. It's going to go all the way through to Pope. He'll take his time. It's lost by Newcastle. Lapia. He can't find a way through there. Sam Maximan carries that ball away from Lapia. Sam Maximan running at the defence. Oh, Chaletta Sar. Not a lot he can He's really off. do. He's off, isn't he? The other car. Yes, it's coming. And there is Ricards. And Bruno Gimarais. Getting involved as well, he's going to be booked. Well, it's Bruno Gimarais. Picked up the card. And look at Murphy there waving Gilletta Saar goodbye. And a Croatian sent off here. But there really wasn't a lot he could do with Sam Maximum running well, at him. Do you know what? If there's any consolation, the one thing I'd say is he's probably, possibly stopped his team losing a second goal here. If they lose a second goal here, they're out. Maybe if they can hang on at 1 0 now, maybe about the best that they could have hoped for. Well, it's been a fiery game at times. Well, there's a lot on the line. I mean, you just remember these two clubs. How long is it since they've both won silverware? With Southampton beating Manchester City in the last round, they've absolutely thrown this competition wide open. All four coming into the semi finals would have believed they had a genuine chance of winning this. Is this substitution for the 
Rose. Well, Benrick's going to come on to help Southampton. Not concede again here, Walker Peters. And now to make way. And Benrick back at Southampton. And into the wall straight away. This is a long way up, really, for Trippier to have a go at goal. Cher can get power behind the ball from this sort of range. And a ball there ready for this one, those Newcastle fans. And a bit cold as well. Well, Southampton support is not happy that Newcastle taking their time on this free kick. Stuart Atwell wants them to get on with it. Trippier. Gonna go for goal here. Trippia does, but Azuno saw that all the way. Long way out as you as you said to get the power. Difficult distance. Well, this is just the first semi-final. Tomorrow at the city ground, Nottingham Forest against Manchester United, the first leg. We have the reverses as well. St. James's Park. And will Newcastle take a lead from this game into that match next Tuesday? Sam Maxima. And I'll say it anyway, he's made an impact since coming off the bench. He usually does, doesn't he? To be fair. Be pleased with an awful lot of what he's seen from his team. A couple of defensive lapses have allowed Southampton a couple of chances, but looking very much now, given that Southampton only have ten men, like another clean sheet, which this remarkable run continues for Nick Pope. Is it forward? Adams will be penalised here. And you did say it, Don, in the, the, the situation now. So they have just got to make sure they don't concede a second. The Newcastle are going for it. Every time they get the ball goes dead, they're getting it back in quick. They believe there still may be a chance. See how much time is added on here. We're in the 90th minute. Sam Maxima. Isa. Drawing Lianco, five minutes more to play. Even though Southampton are losing at this point in time, Nathan Jones will just hope that they can escape with this sort of scoreline because it still gives them a chance at St James's Park, of course. An outside chance. And if they conceded again, I think that chance would be zero. Armstrong. Things change so quickly in this world of VAR. Adam Armstrong. And another generation. I think it'd be 1-1. One, one. Well, we've seen that sort of sight yeah. before. <laughs> Tradition. It's quite warm, really, for those Newcastle fans. Geordie summertime. The South Coast and all that. Forward, excellent ball, Sam Maxima. Newcastle looking to put this match to bed, and they might do from the angle. The power behind that from Murphy, but no real direction on to go. I think missed a trick, I really do. So end up having to take a shot from the angle. And the more central here, you get a touch, get out of your feet, ends up wide. Really difficult to score from there. Into added time. Murphy. Great opportunity. Chase after this, but Nick Pope, this is going to be easy for him. And another game where he looks like he's not going to be beaten. It's Newcastle defence, which has been the best in the country. 
when they do penetrate if they've got standing goalkeeper behind them coming into this game, certainly in Premier League terms. He's saved a certain five or six goals. Share. Sam Maximum. Nice. In control match at the moment, but not quite on the same wavelength. Might be a good time to ask you who your player of the match is, Tom. Well, it's one of the few mistakes he's made, <laughs> just, which is typical, isn't it, really? But I just think he exudes control. I think he does everything with and without the ball. Very, very impressive. Zunu. Will Southampton commit to this attack? Adozi. Play, but couldn't find out. Pope wasting no time. Oh, Sam Maxwell leaving the ball behind, but still able to go forward. And what was he going for there, yeah, Sam Maxwell? No, he, no, he saw Bazuno off his line. He was off his line, the goalkeeper. He's spotted it. It was blocked. Well, at least one more minute to play. Longstaff, Joel Linton, set to be the match winner. Gemarais on a plate. Isak round the goalkeeper, but just still too much to do in the end. Well, Sean Longstaff made his way into the penalty area, but. Alexander Isak doesn't see him. To be fair to Bazunu, forces him wide there, actually gets a hand on the ball. Their chances, haven't they, to have scored more than one. Interesting indeed. Long staff. Ooh, he was away down that right hand side. Salasu will pick up a booking. Been a fair few yellow cards in this game. I think, I think that confirms the entire starting back four have been booked. It's a blatant one. Sally Suit. We're having another little flare up here. And Murphy has looked to wind up a few Southampton players in this game. Feisty, didn't it, in the end, the game. A little bit of a shoulder barge from Longstaff in that incident as well. On a dozy. <laughs> like I said, Newcastle truly believe they can get another one this set. Centre halves forward, one last chance. Ball sent in again. Alcaraz. What a new cup to United lead at the end of the first lap. <laughs> Thanks to a goal from Joe Linton. Southampton had some chances of their own. Adam Armstrong thought he'd equalised only to see the goal disallowed for handball. But Newcastle themselves had plenty of chances to win by more than they did in the end. But win, they have done. And they have the advantage ahead of the second leg at St. James's Park. And the final score at St. Mary's. Southampton nil, Newcastle United won. Celebrating the way and he turned to St. to give him a congratulations from his teammates after that winning goal. They did have some other chances later, didn't they? But it was tight, that. It was, it was tight. It was really tight. I thought they um, they, they probably scored against the run of play. Southampton was probably having their best spell, spell in the game uh, of chances themselves or opportunities and, and really putting Newcastle under pressure in the second half. But, um, you know, 
in the end, I, I think it was a fair result because I thought Newcastle probably had the better chances in the game. Uh, the one that Joe Linton put over the bar, he saved his blushes in the end. I'm not sure he had saved his blushes, but uh, <laughs> he's put one in the back of the net, so uh, maybe they, they could go to the second leg, one, one the up. There are decisions that we will look at, including Adam Armstrong's disallowed goal when the ball hit his hand before going onto the leg, and by the, by the letter of the law, that is a handball, and the officials have got that right. But we'll look at